Hi, you guys. Welcome back to Meaningful Motivations with Tracy Erickson. And of course, if you are new to this channel, welcome. My name is Tracy Erickson, and this video is going to be all about the story of the Greenbrier Ghost of West Virginia. Now, this story is for all of you out there who are interested in true crime, but also interested in the paranormal. Because this story is of the very first instance in United States history where someone was convicted of murder based on supernatural evidence. We're gonna talk about it, so stay tuned. Today's spooky story was so intriguing to me because it's kind of like a cross between a true crime story and a paranormal story. So today's story is all about how the supernatural meets the true crime community in the story of the Greenbrier Ghost. As many of us already know, it is somewhat common for a spirit to stick around in this earthly plane to seek justice in their own demise. And it seems that that is the case with the Greenbrier ghost, because this Greenbrier ghost is actually the spirit of Zona Hester Shu, who was murdered. In Zona's case, she stuck around just long enough to get her murderer convicted in a court of law based on her supernatural testimony that she gave through her mother, Mary Hester. I just want to take a moment to tell you guys about Tracy's Apothecary. Tracy's Apothecary is my Etsy shop where I am selling my handmade essential oil and crystal creations. All of the products from Tracy's Apothecary were created in a sacred space and with strong intention. So if you want to check it out, go to tracysapothecary.etsy.com. And this time of year, when the veil is thinnest between worlds, I love to use my spiritual protection roller with black tourmaline. So this essential oil blend is infused with the crystal energy of the black tourmaline and it has been charged with Reiki by me as well for the highest good of all concerned. So all you do is you just roll it on wherever you want to roll it on and it gives you this very light but yummy smell as well as spiritual protection offered by the essential oils within the blend as well as the crystals. Edward Stribling Shoe was a 36-year-old blacksmith who moved to the Lewisburg, West Virginia area to follow his new job at this blacksmith shop in the Greenbrier County. And he moved there in the fall of 1896 and he met Zona Hester right away, who was only 20 years old at the time. They did not date or court for very long because by October of 1896, Edward and Zona were now married. January 23rd, 1897 seemed like an average day at the Shoe residence. Edward went to work at the blacksmith shop and as he was working away, he ended up asking a neighborhood boy to go stop by his house to help his wife Zona with some household chores. And of course, so the boy obliged and he goes over to the shoe residence. But upon arrival, he doesn't get greeted by the normal Zona. 
he's actually greeted by a gruesome scene and a blood trail leading all the way to the body of Zona lying on the dining room floor. The boy was terrified. He noticed that Zona's head was like off to one side. So he ended up running home as fast as he could and he told his mom what he had seen. And so the mother of the boy ended up calling Dr. George Knapp to come and check out the scene. She also notified Edward of what had been found at his home. Now, before the coroner, George Knapp, could actually get to the home, Edward was already there first, and he was sure to prepare the body for the coroner. So Edward made sure to put her in a very stiff collared outfit with a very large bow that covered her entire neck. And he even put a black veil over his wife's face. And by the time George Knapp got there, Edward was sobbing uncontrollably, constantly holding his wife's body, sobbing and crying, and would not let George Knapp get a very good look at her. And he definitely kept George away from his wife's neck. Because of the way Edward was sobbing uncontrollably and hanging all over the body of his wife, Zona, George Knapp really couldn't get in there to get a good examination done to see what exactly was the cause of Zona's death. So after a very cursory examination, George Knapp put down her official cause of death as everlasting faint. Everlasting faint is actually another way of saying that she had a heart attack. And after George Knapp thought about it for a little while, he ended up changing the cause of death to childbirth because he realized that he was actually treating Zona of some other malady in the weeks leading up to her death. And he thought maybe what she was experiencing before her death was pregnancy. Not only did Zona's mother have questions about the cause of death of her daughter, but so did all of the people in the town because this Edward Shoe character was new in the area and he had kind of a shady past. Zona was actually Edward's third wife. Yes, he was on wife number three at the young age of only 36. After leaving his first wife, he then married the second wife. And the second wife is also dead. And her death was caused by Edward accidentally dropping a pile of bricks on her when they were fixing the roof of a home. Edward was also an ex-con who had already done time for stealing someone's horse. And to add to everyone's suspicion, Edward was sure to keep everyone away from Zona's neck during the funeral. A short time after her daughter's funeral, Mary Hester prayed for answers because she felt deep within her heart that her daughter's death was no heart attack and it was no pregnancy. She believed that her daughter's death had nothing to do with illness and everything to do with her husband, Edward. So shortly after that burial, Mary prayed and prayed. And then over the course of a few days, she ended up receiving four visions. In the last of these visions, Zona comes to her mother within this dream vision and her neck actually falls to the side with ghostly guts falling out of a wound coming from her neck. And within this vision, Zona said that her husband broke her neck at the very first vertebrae. Mary Hester was very loud about these visions that she had seen, these visions or visitations from her deceased daughter. So she went around town telling everybody what she'd seen and what she'd heard from her daughter Zona from beyond the grave. And actually word reached the local officials and they actually decided to exhume Zona's body to 
look once again at her injuries to see if they could come up with a better answer as to her cause of death. And surprise, surprise, just like Mary said, it turns out Zona's actual cause of death was due to her neck being broken at the first vertebrae. So that's when they decided to charge Edward with the murder of his wife. So throughout this trial, Edward was actually feeling like he was still going to get away with this crime because he thought to himself, who's going to believe this? Who's going to believe that a ghost came and told you what happened to her body while she was living? And he also thought, well, while they may see that her neck is broken, they can't actually prove that he did the deed. Maybe they could even pin this whole thing on the neighborhood boy that he sent over to find Zona that morning. Edward's lawyer tried to discredit Mary's uh, claims based on her just being a superstitious woman who was following her own whims. But her testimony is what really sealed Edward's fate. During her testimony, Mary is quoted saying, I was as fully awake as I am at this moment. She told me that Shu had come in from the shop very hungry and was furious when he found that she had not prepared any meat for supper. She had replied that there was plenty of supper without meat, including applesauce and preserves, and that it was a very good supper. She said that he had come over to her, had taken her head in his hands and lifted her, and with a sudden wrench, he had dislocated her neck and she died. Yeah, that's right, you guys. Zona's ghost actually tells the story, and if this is correct, Edward actually killed her because he didn't have any meat on his plate for supper, even though she did offer him food, just not the food he wanted. So evidently, that was grounds for murder. Mary Hester had never even visited her daughter Zona's home before her death. Her marriage was so short-lived that her mother hadn't even visited her marriage home. So during her visions, her daughter also gave her a thorough description of her home as well as the neighborhood. And so the witnesses or people from around the area were able to say that her descriptions were also correct of the home and of the neighborhood. So that just kind of added to Mary's testimony that this was a true visitation from the spirit of her daughter, Zona. The jury looked over all of the circumstantial evidence as well as this ghostly testimony from Zona's mother. And it only took them an hour of deliberation before coming out and calling Edward Shue guilty for the murder of his wife. Edward Shu was given a life sentence in prison, but he only served for three years before falling victim to an unknown epidemic, and he died. Some people believe that it's possible that Zona got to him from beyond the grave and took his life the way that he took hers. So that's why the Greenbrier ghost is still a popular story even today in the Greenbrier County of West Virginia. It is because, like I said, it was the very first time in the United States history that someone was convicted of murder based on the eyewitness testimony of a ghost. So what do you guys think of this story? I really want to hear your thoughts about it. Let me know what you think down in the comments down below. I think that in this particular case, there was some circumstantial evidence that really helped the case, um, such as the fact that it's just strange that on the very day that she was found dead, like her husband sent a neighborhood boy over to help with some chores. So it was like, he was trying so hard to set it up so he wouldn't be the one found finding her body. And then for him to 
cover her neck and to hang on to her so tightly so that she couldn't even be examined properly. And then to keep everyone away from her body at the funeral so they couldn't get a closer look at her neck. And honestly, I just think that with him coming into the area in the fall of 1896 and marrying this woman by that same October, it was just strange how quick this relationship moved on into marriage. And then from October to January, how quick she went from being married to being dead. So there are just so many questions that Edward himself created through trying to cover up this uh, crime that he had committed. I do also believe that since he was kind of a new person in the area, that the locals here in Greenbrier, West Virginia, just didn't really trust the guy. They saw him as kind of an outsider, someone who came in and took the life of this woman who was quite a bit younger than him as well. Now, some people believe that Mary Hester didn't actually see visions of her daughter, but they believe that she had a feeling that Edward had more to do with her death than he was leading people to believe. So there are some people out there who believe that this was more like Mary's way of giving her dead daughter a voice was to claim that she had these visitations or these visions of her daughter. But as someone who has actually experienced a dream visitation in the past, I do believe that it is very, very possible that Mary was visited by her daughter. She never claimed otherwise. So I believe Mary, Zona's mother, that she actually did receive these visions or visitations from her daughter, Zona, from beyond the grave. But I'd love to know what you guys think about it. Well, that about wraps it up for this video. So if you like this video, be sure to click that like button and share this video with all your friends out there. And of course, if you're a viewer but not yet a subscriber, I would just love for you to click subscribe down below. And once you have subscribed, you can then turn on that notification bell if you would like to be notified each and every time I upload a new video. Thank you guys so much for watching and spending your time with me. I love you. And I'll see you next time. Bye.